Hello, and welcome to a quick uh, digital rebar provision demo. I'm here with Greg Althaus. Hi, how are you? And uh, we're going to go through, I pulled out an ancient Mac Pro uh, for this, so that Prue we sort of could work on any system at all, four gigs of RAM. Uh, and we're just going to go through digital rebar provision. If you're interested, um, just as a background, so this is rebar.digital. Digital rebar provision right here is going to take you uh, to the GitHub site. And so this is the standalone provisioner. It's really the version three of the digital rebar provisioner. Cobbler replacement, simple. Um, and from here, you can get into all sorts of things, our quick start guide, our install guide. Uh, so I have those opened already in links over here. This is the docs. We've been really working hard to make sure there's some nice, clean, easy to use documentation, including architecture. Uh, so we're about to do this quick start and do a whole bunch of just bring it up, but read this stuff. It'll help you know what ports to open and how the thing works and how Pixie and TFTP boot and all those things interact together. Um, so that's here. And then there's some really nice workflow charts uh, that Greg put together around this stuff for how you bounce back and forth between these services. So check these things out. Uh, but for now, we just want to get you started. Uh, we spent some time trying to make sure that that works in a super easy way. So here's the website. Quick start guide. Yay, quick start. And curl bash. Yay, curl bash. Now this is interesting because of this dash dash isolated. And so I'm going to bring up a terminal. There's a terminal. Make a directory. Uh, DRP. I'm now in DRP, and I'm just going to paste this one line, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and so what the point of this quick start is for isolated to just create an environment that you can play with and try it out. So isolated is saying keep everything in this directory. Ah, OK, that's that dash dash isolated. Yeah. So if I wanted, without that flag, it would install it in my system. That's right. It put it things in like user local bin, create user uh, bar lib kind of directories on Linux systems. It would actually install the system service management pieces. So if it were a system D system, there'd be a system D init you know, file or a so system file. It sounds like system. a lot of complexity. I thought this was simple. Just yeah, so that's why we're doing the isolated part. So, uh, it's okay. just, so this bash install is going to. But, e but even so, it's still just a Go program, right? Yeah, it's, it's a one single program. program. And the okay. files are amazingly simple, but it's just that way if you wanted to run it. It's so if it's a real service, it's a right. database. OK, database service. Sorry. Data center service. All right, so I just installed it. If I uh, look at my files here, you'll see I've got a whole bunch of files. Uh, and then I'm just going to run provision. So it's sudo. Um, so it's going to sudo dr provision, which is the service. Mm -hmm. It's going to put the file root in my local path and the data root in my local path. So it's going to store things here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then it's going to run it in the background. That's right. Okay, and so this tools discovery load is a separate command. command so I'm going to do yep. those things one at a time. Did I copy it? I don't think I copied it. I'm just not used to. I, I'm a Linux desktop guy, so I'm not used to these old MacBook Pros. Max. Copy, paste, enter. Ah, it's running in the. It's, so right now it's running in the background. Mm -hmm. Should be. Should be. How can I tell? Well, so you can do a, a, a just FG. CLI command. Uh, okay. So you can do dot slash DRP CLI. Okay. Dash uh, capital U. Ah, okay. And then rocket skates. Capital P and then rocket skates but slightly differently. Rocket Skates like that. Rocket Skates was our code name while we were T, developing this. TS. TS, right? Yeah, space. And then um, prefs list. OK. Uh, so, it didn't start. Yeah, it didn't start. So let's do this. We can start do the same thing without the, ah, it didn't provide a password. So yeah. I'm doing this without the background. Yeah. That's what, yeah, that's, need, that's exactly what happens. So hold on, Control C. I'm going to. Go back to the ampersand. This is why we want to do demos like this. Mm -hmm. FG. Yeah. Now I can type in my password. 
Yeah, that looks better. And now it started. And now it's popped up and it's asking me to allow this to accept incoming connections, which I better say yes to if I want it to work. And now you can do Control Z, BG. Control Z, BG. Pushes it back into the background. Got it. Okay. So now the system's running. Um, I can talk. Now I should be able to interact with my command line. Mm -hmm. Perhaps list. Exactly right. And it intermixed the background um, API call too. So I could see the server action, which is what that line is. And then on top of that, my actual command. Yeah. That's really cool. So next, I need to take another step, which is way back in my scroll history now. Uh, but pretty straightforward. This tools discovery load mm -hmm. thing. So this is another one of those widgets that you made that makes things simpler. Yeah. So the next step is we're trying to set up to do a basic machine discovery. And so we need to install some boot environments for you to operate that. So we're getting our digital rebar sledgehammer image and we're going to make that available as a discovery boot environment and a sledgehammer boot environment. So this is downloading off of Amazon. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I'm in a caged environment, I can't download this stuff? So you can go and get that, ice, that tarball and put it in the ISOs directory in the, under assets. And so in some regards, assets. Yeah, you can't look at that right now. You're running the community. Oh, OK. So it's running. Um, do it if I open a new. Uh, that's not what I meant to do. Control T. Yeah. Uh, okay. Apple. Apple. Or, T. Yeah, that thing. There it is. Yay. So in here, there's an assets directory. That's where all the stuff lives. And by default, there's no ISOs directory. But if you create an ISOs directory and put the uh, components you want, this includes also the ISOs for operating systems, then they won't download it from the internet. It'll just use this directory to then push that into provision. Uh, oh, I'll make it. All right. So this, so right, so we're going through a download process. While we're waiting on that, can we go to the website? Yeah. So there's an embedded be. web website for this. Yeah, there should be. 127 yeah. 001 and uh, call 8092 and it's 8092. Ah, that's an important point. So I've never done this on this machine, so let's see. All right, connection not private because it's self-generated certificate, right. right? Which is something else in the directory you could add your own. Proceed. So in this case, apps up, but oh, wait, so so you know, username, username and password. password again. Okay, so same thing, rocket skates. Uh, colon R O C K E T S K eight T S. Wow. Okay, and it just took it. So I, I know there's a cheat. If if I want to, I can just say uh, token equals same thing. Rocket skates. And there's a way to generate tokens. Think, uh, short term use tokens too. R O C K E T S K eight T S like that. And then I don't have to type it if I refresh the page. And, Wow, okay, so in this case, we have pretty simple, we have subnets, boot environments, preferences for what machines to boot, and then I have no machines in the system at all, got it. And then if I jump back over here, oh, you can see a whole bunch of web activity. Mm -hmm. How do I know that that boot in? Let's see if it's back yet, and it's not, so it's still okay. downloading, it looks like. Okay. Which makes sense, because if you look, you can, in the UI, Mm -hmm. Since we're here, you can see discovery has an error. Oh, if you actually open the down, yeah, little arrow. Um, no, well, hey, we're not showing the. Here's the CLI. You'll see some errors <laughs> that says that uh, the boot images aren't available yet. So we're in the we create the boot environment, and then we upload the tarball into the boot environment, and once the provision sees the ISO or tarball in this case. Um, it will explode it and then make it available. Makes sense. So the idea is it's not available right now. And the reason they're separate is because we want people to be able to have local resources and upload them themselves if they want, instead of automatically dragging in an ISO every right. time. Also, ISOs can be reused. So the mm -hmm. idea is that like, oh. I might choose to have a CentOS install that installs a certain set of information of 
like creates a disk layout one way and then another one that does it a different way. But they still use the same install ISO. So we reuse the ISO. So I, I suspect, because I know we have the same philosophy with templates and things like that, that there's a whole other session that we need to do on yes. reuse and, and how this stuff how this stuff works. Um, and then, huh, something's going on with my terminal that wants my attention. Okay, so it thinks um, you may have had a networking timeout issue on this machine. Right, and on this network. Okay, let's see how we're doing. So go ahead and refresh the... Uh, Oh, no, oh, maybe it's done. So and go ahead refresh and refresh here. this screen and see what happens. Okay, so oh, and now that error cleared, available as yes. Yeah. So let's um, run that command again. And just run it again? Yeah, because right. we're missing sledgehammer, so my guess is something uh, timed out, but it then worked for discovery. If the ISOs are already there, they'll be cached, and so... Um, Look already exists. Discovery. All right, so I must have. It looks like that's a single run thing, so we'll deal with it later. Okay. Yeah, it's refreshed again. So I've got boot environments. I know I, I, I'm not actually broadcasting. If I try and boot a machine, nothing's going to happen, right? That's correct. Right now, you won't. Okay. So, first thing I need is a DHCP subnet. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. So. So this is, uh, don't. I don't actually want to do this subnet if I want a local boot system. This is a completely new, so what do I, so this is wrong. Let's not do that, because this is going to broadcast on our, our Wi-Fi. Yeah, on our Wi-Fi network. <laughs> not so, not so happy. So I need a virtual box running up here. I think what I have to do is create a new network in virtual box. There are no network. Uh, yeah, you uh, should just be able to create a virtual machine. And as a consequence, we'll create oh, okay. A so let's let's create our new virtual machine to boot from. Boot me. Uh, and everybody knows it should be Linux. And Ubuntu is fine. So we're going to go into expert mode. Maybe that'll give us some more options. Uh, I think we'll, we'll want it. Uh, boot me. Oh, sorry. I should have just stuck in the wizard. Linux. One one gig of RAM. We're just booting fun. this. Uh, we're going to create this. We're going to create, uh, oh, that's good, dynamically allocated. Yay. Okay, so oh. now you want to go to the network. So, ne well, and I also need to make some changes because it's not going to uh, oh, network here, like all settings. 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 Okay. Network. Yeah, so I'm going to change. I don't want that. I don't want that. Huh? I, I you want the adapter, but you want uh, like a internal network or That's not bridged, bridge. not bridged, not bridged. Internal is fine. Or host only. Host network. only, probably. Okay. Name there is none. Uh, let's see. Um, so we may have to create. I'm going to have to create a yeah, that's network. Right. That's all right. This is network somewhere in here. There's. Good. I think it's actually under preferences. Of course. So the network right here. Host only network. I have to add one. We inbox that. All right. So now go in and fit. All right. Um, you want to go to the DHCP server part. Oh. And disable that. That would be a conflict. Yes. Yes. So now you want to go look at that real quick. Well, it's fine. It'll work. Okay. So okay. Save. So now, while well, here, we want to go into the network. Change that to host only. The inbox so zero. That's, that's Yay, that okay. looks good. Say okay here. And while we're here, Oops. let's also change its yeah. System. I have to network I have to network boot it. And, you wanna, and I want network boot first because the way we're structured, we yeah, always uh, our recommendation is you always pick to do it. We can configure other other things. We always recommend network boot first. And I should be done other than that. Yeah. So just wait there and let's go back to the email. So now if I refresh, I should have another interface. Or maybe not. I probably have to attach to that virtual network, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. Discover. Look at that. So right. now you can select your VBOX net. And the subnet represents the 
range of addresses. Okay. Optional means that we're going to not require MAC IP bond bound. We're just going to take anything that shows up. Okay. So if you if you require reservations, then you can limit what we respond to. From right. you can set that cool. to required, and it'll. Okay. And then we have a range of addresses we're going to hand out. Then we need to set values, so we're going to populate the next server. Okay. And then we're going to fill in with the default gateway, DNS server, domain, and the boot file. So these are all safe for, for this quick demo, right. but there, there's real networking knowledge that you need yeah. if you're doing anything more complex. But for the most part, for just discovery playing, you can operate this way. That's pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to add this. And so it took it off my available lists. Right. And now it's, so I, I know there's a VBox net that's, that's available. Okay, and one more thing. Yep. Uh, well, two more things. We need to go to the unknown boot environment and change the preference. Unknown boot and down here. Okay, yeah. preference. Okay. To discovery. That makes sense. All right. So we're not going to ignore boots. We're going to we're give it our discovery. Give image. it a discovery image. Okay. And now we need to go back to the shell and add the sledgehammer. Now this should have been done automatically, and so that network timeout I think prevented the boot environment sledgehammer from loading. Okay. So. This is useful because we can show you how to add other boot environments too. So if you cd it into assets from this directory, okay. ls, you can see there's a set of boot ins and templates and ISOs. The idea is that inside boot ins we provide a bunch of yeah, files, right? Okay. So the way you install these is by doing a CLI command. Okay, which is this DRP. Yeah, but we want to, since the CLI is a level up, we need to do that. <laughs> Good catch. All right, so now we want to say boot ends. So, yeah, all that's good. Oh, I could boot have ends. Right. Install. Makes sense. Space boot ends. Slash sledgehammer. Yeah, that. Okay. And that'll upload it. So now it's going to start the process. <laughs> should go through and see that things are already present. So that YAML file has the, the all the configuration for the end. It also has the the ISO or the whatever. References to the ISO. Okay. So it'll attempt to pull it down. So if I want to add like CentOS or Ubuntu in this, I can just install Ubuntu mm -hmm. or install CentOS. Right. And they'll try and down, automatically download the ISOs for those particular boot environments. And if I wanted to modify the kickstarts, I guess I'm back into templates in the Kickstarter process awesome. over here. Like this one has a couple of templates. Yeah. Now you? some templates are inlined because they're really small, so we okay. don't worry about creating a custom file for them. The boot environment. This is back to let's okay. edit boot environment to templates. Right? All right. I think I'm going to hold that one for yeah. another CentOS and Ubuntu. Maybe it's a, another. So now we've got all the environments. Oh, it's done. Need. Okay. Yeah. So I need to refresh over here. It did. It did. This this refresh? I don't know. I don't, the UI doesn't. Oh. That's a, that's on my to do list. Okay, so there you go. So now you have both. Okay, so now it's good. good. Now this and one. Oh, this one switched to Sledgehammer automatically. Yes. So that's that install script actually you did the right thing. Okay. That's pretty cool. Uh, so now now we want to go boot that system. Let's go boot it. All right. This is not the fastest laptop in the world. So. Uh, I don't care. Can I just cancel this? I think I can. Yep. So it's booting, going through Pixie. Uh, DHCP is answering now. If I if I'm clever and I pull up our terminal window, I'm not in that. Okay. There's one other thing. One other thing. Uh oh. I got to figure out how to get out of this. Yeah, we didn't boot. Uh, hit left, left control or left command. There you go. Now, on Macs, they have a different networking stack than Linux. Oh. If you go to the Quick Start page, the Quick Start page? Aha, uh -huh. this Quick Start page. Right. Um, let's see. Oh, it's on the install page. I should move it to the Quick Start page. Okay. Sorry. So that's, that's cool. And let's see. So here. So if you scroll down, keep going. 
that note there, uh, Darwin, okay, they need an explicit route on how to handle broadcast addresses. So you need to say which path that route should take. Okay, this is not actually the right address. That's not, that's an example. Okay. And so you'll need to do. Over here, I need the no, information from the. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Well, you need that information. Right? So, but I can start with this command. So I'm going to paste it and control C. Control it. <laughs> not take that one. So in this case, it's, you, it's right 188, 168, 56. Six. Okay, which is the uh, address of yeah, that? the address of your network. Not, not crazy hard to think. No, All right, fine. now I need my password. Oof. All right. All right, so now you need to restart DR provision. Ah, okay, so now I have to foreground this. It exited on you because it had no oh. path to route. So if I look at so. it, it exited. Oh, oh, I see it. Okay. There you go. Uh, wait. Oh. So I just, I'm in the wrong directory. Yeah. Oops. That didn't work. And I don't, so do I have to recreate any no. of this stuff? We stored everything into the digital rebar directory in this. In this uh, path, so okay. that everything so the service is persistent. That's right. That's easy. So now you should be able to restart that VM. Okay. So let's try this. Here's my VM. You control R. Uh, control R. Or capital R. Reset. And then if I, okay, I lost it again. I'm trying to get back to my terminal, but I'll wait. Because on the terminal side, you can actually watch everything go. So it's it's actually loading Sledgehammer. Doing this thing, right? Yep. So let's say terminal here, terminal there. So I can actually see actions of the the rebar the rebar provision server handing out addresses, doing the things it needs to do um, on this side while it's actually doing this load. Wow, this machine's a lot slower than uh, some of our newer newer gear, isn't it? Um, normally, this is so fast mm -hmm. you can't even see it happen, um, but what happens when you dig out a eight-year-old laptop. Let's the people see exactly every step of the, the process. Um, but this is it. This is fundamentally, we've, we're at the end of the video uh, for the quick install. So when you go through this process, quick, you can download, you put it in a, in a standalone directory. Um, you need to put in that subnet mask if you're on a Mac. Um, you need to attach your, create your subnet and attach your subnet and upload the images with that one line command. Um, and then you have to be able to build a, a virtual box machine with Pixie Boot. That's pretty much the only requirement on a host only network. Yeah. Um, that seems pretty straightforward. So if you have a laptop built sometime in the last three or four years, you should be able to do this in five minutes. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. If you have questions, please, please, please uh, get in touch with us. Through the rebar.digital site, there is a uh, Gitter channel, we have a Slack channel, we have a IRC channel all connected together. Um, we want to help you get this stuff running. So uh, we're really eager to get your feedback and, and hear how things are going with it. I hope this was helpful. Thanks a lot, Greg. Have a good day. Thanks.